Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Very Cold Lasagna, your filthy casual place for all the filthy casual takes on the world of sports. I am Dylan Lasagna, and welcome back to our weekly recaps of the 2022 NFL season. And Thanksgiving weekend has come and gone, and our tummies are full of NFL football and some food, too. <laughs> so hopefully um, you got your, your food in and your football in and whatever sports you consumed uh, this past weekend because, well, there's a lot to talk about uh, in the world of football in this video that we're about to do right here and now. So let's get into it. So, of course, with it being Thanksgiving weekend, nobody was on by this week. Everyone was here to feast or famine this week. Everyone was about to either be eat or be eaten. So that started with the Thanksgiving slate of games on Thanksgiving Day, starting with the Buffalo Bills traveling to Detroit to take on the Lions. And these Lions fought very hard um, at the very end with the defense keeping Josh Allen and the Bills in check for most of the game. And Jared Goff in the offense actually doing pretty solid. But the Bills persevered as Tyler Bass took a last-minute field goal to take the lead with two seconds left in the game to outlast Detroit 28-25. to Then in the middle game, uh, the Dallas Cowboys took on the New York Giants in the pivotal NFC East matchup. And despite the Giants netting two interceptions in the first half on Dak Prescott, the Dallas defense put down Daniel Jones in the offense in the second half as Dak Prescott and the boys um, ran away with this one with Don Schultz two touchdowns leading the way as Dallas uh, swept the season series against the New York Giants 20-20 and got a, pit, it got a critical tiebreaker um, in, the, in their playoff race against New York. Then in the nightcap on Thanksgiving night, a Justin Jefferson for the Vikings went berserk for over 100 receiving yards and Kirk, as Kirk Cousins bounced back with three touchdowns as the Vikings survived the late Patriots rally, or at least their attempt to, 33-26 to to end Thanksgiving. So looking at the rest of the week, uh, 12 slate uh, on Sunday and Monday, let's start with the early morning portion, shall we? Man, when you look at that Carolina and Denver game, as if losing to the freaking Raiders was bad enough if you're Denver, Nathaniel Hackett's Broncos continue to look so embarrassingly bad on offense that cameras caught the defense finally snapping at Russell Wilson to do something freaking productive, and yet they didn't. Because Sam Darnold and the Panthers cruised all over the Broncos 26 to 10 in another embarrassing matchup. And if this was a further indication that Nathaniel Hackett should be fired by now or at least towards the end of the season, I honestly don't know what is. And the the trade for Russell Wilson is starting to look very bad for, for Denver right now. So anyway, going to Cleveland as the Browns took on the Bucks. They were down 17-10 to 10 at one point with just another minute left. But Jacoby Brissett, in his last start for uh, the Browns before, the re big return of Deshaun Watson. Jacoby Brissett led his offense down the field as he threw a late touchdown to tight end David Njoku to force overtime, where in, in the overtime period, he also threw a long bomb to Amari Cooper to set up a touchdown with less than a minute left also <laughs> uh, to set up a touchdown run for Nick Chubb to win it for the skid marks. <laughs> the skid marks actually upset Tom Brady and the Bucks, um, 23 to 17 in the extra period. As yeah, they're in somewhat a little bit of position uh, of a wild card spot as Deshaun Watson is about to return in that big, big matchup against the Houston Texans. Oh boy. Oh boy. Let's see how this goes. And a lightning delay in the land of all elite made the Jaguars all elite. As uh, the the ja the Jaguars and Trevor Lawrence, um, who their young QB had the best day of his young career in a toe to toe affair against Lamar Jackson, and Lawrence actually came out on top with a nice big drive that ended with the connection to Zay Jones on a two point conversion, as Justin Tucker missed a long extra point, uh, uh, not an extra point, a field goal attempt. As the Jaguars held on to beat the Ravens 28 to 27. Holy heck. The Jaguars may not um, make the playoffs or do anything else productive this season, but hey, they have a little bit of a bright future ahead of them with Trevor Lawrence and Doug Peterson at the helm. So 
keep your eyes a little bit peeled on that one. Uh, the Dolphins showed off their might against the terrible Texans very early, scoring 30 points in the first half, thanks to an all-around effort. However, once a few key offensive players went out, name, namely on the offensive line, uh, the reserves started coming in. The Texans attempted a rally, but obviously failed, <laughs> as the Dolphins went on to beat the Texans 30-15. to uh, with Justin Fields inactive due to injury and indecisiveness on whether Trevor Simeon or the great legend Nathan Peterman would start. Bears football was in full effect as the Jets' Mike White made them his bitch by scoring them to uh, by scorching them to the tune of three touchdowns in a rainy beatdown on the Bears, 31 to 10, in favor of the Jets. In a tough, grindy battle, it was the Bengals who snuck away as Joe's, Joe Burrow's uh, touchdown to T. Higgins in the third in the third quarter in a costly penalty uh, by the Titans, uh, Kevin Strong, uh, in the very last moments of the game, ended any chance for the Titans to make a comeback, to make one last gasp, uh, to force an extra period or win the game. Cost Tennessee this game as the Cincinnati Bengals held on to beat the Titans 20 to 16 in a critical game for AFC playoff positioning. Like, damn, that sucked. <laughs> that sucked for Tennessee. And another pivotal playoff positioning matchup uh, for the NFC side, it was a little bit of an off day for uh, Taylor Heineke, but the Washington defense commanded and demanded pressure up front and up back on Marcus Mariota. And Kendall Fuller nabbed a clutch tip interception in the end zone with just um, under a minute left as the Washington Commanders commanded a victory and got one over the Atlanta Falcons 19-13. And, man, all four teams in the NFC East are now in in the playoffs if it started today. But Washington in a pole position to grab that last NFC playoff spot. Granted, if they keep winning against the the rest of the NFC East. So we'll see. We'll see. Going to the late afternoon slate of games, uh, the LA Chargers battled the Arizona Cardinals in the de- in the desert. And, you know, despite how better Kyler Murray and the offense looked, it was Justin Herbert and the Chargers who stormed back very late as Austin Eckler scored a late touchdown and on a big gamble two-point try called by uh, Brandon Staley, Justin Herbert connected with his tight end, Gerald Everett, to steal a win in the desert, 25-24. to Like, damn. Guess we're going all in on two-point tries this week. So, And the Chargers took the big game on that one. Uh, in a sudden high-scoring affair in the Emerald City between Derek Carr and Geno Smith, and it actually went to overtime. Josh Jacobs broke, broke through a big hole for an 80-plus yard touchdown run in overtime. And the Raiders won their second straight to upset the Seahawks, 40-34 to in overtime. And as Niners fans, we say, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so anyway, uh, Niners fans would also like to thank somewhat the Kansas City Chiefs because, well, they're continuing to bury the, the division champions, uh, uh, the Super Bowl champions, the LA Rams. So despite some red zone stops by the defense, Bryce Perkins' very first start, yeah, the third stringer, was just as well as you can imagine. It was bad. It was not great, as the Chiefs' offense eventually broke it open enough with some touchdowns by Travis Kelsey and Isaiah Pacheco to further bury the Rams' title defense hopes 26-10. Meanwhile, for my San Francisco 49ers, well, yeah, everyone else in the NFC West lost. They didn't look that great, it's, uh, at least on offense, most particularly, because, yeah, Jimmy G didn't look great. The running game was not there. Kyle Shanahan was calling some very questionable plays, but the 49ers defense stepped up, made every play imaginable to prevent Andy Dolan and the Saints offense from scoring in the end zone as the 49ers defense pitched the shutout, albeit an ugly one, over the New Orleans Saints 13 to nothing. Then in the Sunday night football game of the week 12, uh, the Philadelphia Eagles, despite the guts of Aaron Rodgers, Christian Watson, and Jordan Love, more on them later, uh, the rushing attack of the Eagles and Jalen Hurts uh, continued efficiency in the air and on the ground, pulled away their 10th win of the season as they beat the Packers 40-33. to 
Then the Monday Night Football game of Week 12, uh, Kenny Pickett's Monday Night debut was a decent one. It was a solid one as he led a touchdown winning drive that led to backup running back Benny Snells. Yeah, he replaced an injured Najee Harris. He got a touchdown run to retake a lead late over Jeff Saturday's Colts, who had serious time management issues. Like, what are you doing? You had three timeouts. <laughs> you had all three timeouts uh, in a hurry up offense, and yet you chose not to take any. Like, what the hell? So anyway, uh, the Steelers beat the Colts 24 to 17 thanks to Jeff Saturday's questionable decision making. So that was your week slate of game, uh, week of slate of games for Week 12, and yeah, let me know your thoughts on that one. So let's look at our winners and losers of this past week. So starting with my winners, uh, Josh Jacobs of the Raiders. Like man, what a game he had <laughs> against the Seahawks. Um, in the past couple of weeks, the Seahawks uh, defense has been pretty pretty good, but once once they came off the bye, I guess uh, the Raiders. Uh, Josh Jacobs was like, nope, I'm going to make them expendable. I'm going to make them my bitch. And that's exactly what he did. He he just cruised through them and found, managed to find some holes. And you got to give credit to the, the Raiders offensive line for helping him find some holes. And Josh Jacobs was just able to run through them. And in the receiving game, when Derek Carr was checking down to him, he, he was able to like burst past through a Seahawks defense. It's just wasn't having uh, a good game. So, man, the Raiders are going to have a tough decision to make um, on Josh Jacobs this, this coming offseason because this game was just a defining moment for for that decision. Uh, the Cleveland Browns, yeah, why just get Marks a winner? Because, well, uh, with the way that Jacoby Brissett played in his like last last start of the season, potentially, you know they 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 actually look like they want to win it for him. They unlike the Bucks, uh, <laughs> just like uh, didn't look inspired. Um, like especially considering all the injuries on the Bucks side. But for Cleveland, they absolutely stayed in the fight. They fought hard. You got to give credit for where it's due. Um, and Jacoby Reset, you know, for all his flaws that he has um, at this point in his career, he absolutely played inspired football. Um, in this game against Tampa Bay, where everyone expected um, Tampa Bay to just beat down on them, including myself. So you got to give credit where it's due. And now we're going to see how Deshaun Watson translates into this offense after like weeks and years of not being uh, able to start in the NFL. So we're going to see what happens there. But for now, this is a good way to go out in a bang for Jacob Brissett, um, at least for now. Uh, and then the Cincinnati Bengals, you know, you get a big win um, against the, the Tennessee Titans, who was out for revenge for the divisional loss um, last January. But the, Bang the Bengals, you know, they made Ryan, uh, Ryan Tannehill um, make, a, make some pressure-filled mistakes. And, you know, Derrick Henry almost made, uh, they, they almost, uh, made Derrick Henry cough up a fumble and cause a turnover in the end zone, but... Uh, Traylon Brooks recovered it for a touchdown. But um, this Bengals team, they managed to protect Joe Burrow um, mostly well. And the the backups in uh, Samaji P. Ryan, T. Higgins, um, and Tyler Boyd, you know, they stepped up in this big game against a uh, ferocious Tennessee defense. So the, the Bengals are up and running again. And with the way the Ravens are playing right now, <laughs> you know, you can't you can't assume that the Bengals are going to falter in this AFC North race. Now, looking at the losers of this week, uh, speaking of the Ravens, like, man, what the hell happened in that game? <laughs> what the hell did that happen in that game against uh, the all-elite Jaguars, man? Like, I, I can't really imagine, like, how, how how to put it into words. Like, Lamar Jackson played uh, so well, like, so solid in that game, but it was just, like, when it came to nut-busting time, um, when it came to defending Trevor Lawrence, it's like, they can't do it. They can't do it. So, it, it was just bad. You, you can't allow that. Uh, and then, when when you need Lamar Jackson to throw the damn ball, it's just like, he you let him run. You let him run. And the Jaguars were, were just prepared for it. And now, all of a sudden, you, you and the Bengals have the same record 
And if you keep losing these games, if you keep choking these big leads, you're, you're going to end up as a wild card contender and rather than hosting a playoff game. And even if you host a playoff game, can they, can people really trust this team to hold a lead, whether it's big or small at this point, to, to trust them when it matters most in a playoff game and actually win the game? Can they? With this team, with the way they've been choking? I don't think so. Uh, the Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay Bucks. Uh, you thought that, you know, the way they bounced back in Week 10 the with how well they looked against Seattle and how they've been rolling, you thought it was a turn, turn of the page. But instead, um, it was a lot more of the same in the weeks prior to that. Um, I mean, not to say that Tom Brady didn't look uh, great, but it was the defense that that didn't play that collapsed at the end mainly due to the injuries but also um uh tom brady also kind of faltered at the end and it he was also off with his receivers in mike evans chris godwin it, it was just not really disciplined for the bucks in in that game against the browns in a w- very winnable game against them so now everyone that uh division is pretty much lost is with a losing record. So don't be surprised if Tampa Bay, even though they're leading the division, they end up with a losing record uh, winning the division. So And then the Seahawks. It's like, how many off the bat? You have two weeks to prepare, prepare against a, a Raiders team that pretty much looks lost in themselves, like the skid marks. And then you pretty much regress back to, well, the, 20, the last year's team where the run defense looks bad. The secondary looks bad. Um, Geno Smith uh, looked like his uh, week one and two self. No, no, his week two self against the 49ers. And then Kenneth Walker wasn't able to gain any separation from the Raiders' run defense or against better teams, lack thereof. So, man, if you if they were able to play this, well, this poorly, again, you know, they were just coming off a bye, but can't give them that, that much slack if they were to come if they play continue to play this badly against the um, other teams i mean hey good news for us as 49ers fans but in, in a general sense if they continue to play this bad yeah like their hopes of actually uh, exceeding expectations and actually making a playoff spot it could probably crash and burn so who knows uh, but this was not a good uh, start. This is not a good uh, game for them coming off the bye week. So those are your winners and losers of week 12. Now, as we transition over to the hurry up game discussion of the uh, topic of the week, uh, you know, I, I talked about the Green Bay Packers earlier and I talked about Aaron Rodgers, Christian Watson and Jordan Love and where they're at right now. They are, they're currently three. Three, I think three or four and eight right now in, in the season. I think it's four and eight. And Aaron Rodgers, he, he left the game with a thumb injury and the broken and the injured ribs. And if he said after the game that if, if he's healthy enough or if, he, if his x-rays come negative, then he'll play. But I'm just thinking to myself, yeah, they have the Bears coming up and then they have the bye week but it's like what's the point <laughs> like even if, like you'll they'll beat the bears of course because it's bears football then they'll have the bye week but it's like even a you know weak ass nfc like what's the point in playing aaron Rodgers? and even if they get a playoff spot because the teams in the in the playoff race right now are um in the wild card positioning at least are all the nfc east teams and their and their schedule is well against each other the rest of the way. And the, when you look at the Packers schedule, um, they have the Bears, the Vikings, uh, the Lions, and then I'm not sure who else they have left. Oh, the Rams. So they have a much easier schedule um, the rest of the way. But in either case, it's like the way they're playing right now um, and the, the way things are right now, they should be honestly... Do, do they really want to embarrass themselves on on the primetime stage? It's, it's it's honestly not worth it. 
It is honestly not worth it. The rest of the way, this, this month of December should be used to determining whether Jordan Love is their future. They should be getting they should be giving love to Jordan, pretty much. So this this month of December, whether it's this game against uh, against the Bears or it's after the bye or whoever they play, uh, I think it's the Rams on Monday night, should be like Jordan Love's team. Simple as that. Like you have to like they have to decide um, because you don't know if Rogers gonna play next season or the season after. But at some point in time, it, you have to know whether Jordan Love, who you spent a first round pick on, is the future of the Green Bay Packers. And if he's not, then you use next year's draft potentially <laughs> to find that guy. Because as it says right now, like I said. If Aaron Rodgers decides to retire this offseason, then you don't know you don't know what to do at quarterback if Jordan Love is not that guy. So the Packers need to use this month of December, whether it's starting next week against the Bears or after the bye against the Rams, to determine whether or not Jordan Love is the future at quarterback for the Green Bay Packers. So they better do something. Um, and decide on Aaron Rodgers and Jordan Love. So let me know your thoughts on that uh, in, in the comments below on Jordan Love and the Green Bay Packers situation as well as Aaron Rodgers and your thoughts on Week 12 overall around the league. So this is Dylan Lasagna signing out a very cold lasagna and keep that lasagna very cold in the fridge with your takes on the world of sports. And I hope you all enjoyed your Thanksgiving weekend as much as I did. And until next time, Peace out.